So in this video, I'm gonna talk about ultra wide angle lenses and when you should consider getting a 16 to 35 or 14 to 24 millimeter lens. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So one of the things that I get asked all the time is what gear should I get? Should I get this lens or the other lens? And the thing I get asked more than anything else is when should I get a wide angle lens? Is a 24 to 70 enough? And when should I go below 24 millimeters? Should I go down to 20 millimeters? Um, 14, 16 millimeters, whatever. And what I wanna do is try and address that a little bit in this video and talk about the pros and cons of ultra wide angle landscape photography. Um, it's something that I do quite a lot and if you do it right, you can get some stunning results. But there are some cons about it as well, some difficulties with it and I want to address those as well. But if you get it right, you can get images like this. So I'm sure you agree that those are fairly stunning images. They capture the landscape really great. Those foregrounds really pop and really create a sense of drama. But to do that, there's lots of things that you need to think about when you're in the field and decision-making processes that you need to go through when you're building that composition. And what I wanna do is go through those now. So we'll start with the pros. What are the pros of using a wide angle lens? I use the 14 to 30 millimeter lens. I'm just about to upgrade this to the 14 to 24 millimeter lens. Basically the only difference with that is that it's slightly optically better, but this lens has been amazing. It's slightly soft towards the, the, the corners, but apart from that, it's, it's super good. And it's really small as well. These F4 lenses from Nikon are great because they're so, so light. So the first pro, um, of using an, an ultra wide angle lens and shooting at a smaller focal length like 14, 16 millimeters is you get an increased depth of field. A lot of people don't realize but when you drop down the focal length range and you get down to 14 millimeters, 10 millimeters maybe if you've got a crop sensor then you get more depth of field. So the smaller your focal length, um, the better depth of field you have. And that's why a phone camera has super good depth of field because they're like a three millimeter lens or something like that. So that, that they've got a huge amount of depth of field. So that's a real pro. It means that if you're shooting at 14 millimeters, then more things are gonna be in focus. If you just look at this graphic here, it shows that at shooting at 24 millimeters focused on infinity, then everything to about 1.3 meters in is in focus at f11. But if you shoot at 14 millimeters, then you bring that forward to everything from around about 50 centimeters being in focus. So it does make a difference having that smaller focal length. It's why crop sensors are good for landscape photography, because effectively to get a a field of view of 14 millimeters, you've got to use like something like a nine millimeter lens in an APS-C camera. For, for that 40 millimeter field of view, you're using a nine millimeter lens and you've got even more depth of field than somebody using a full frame camera at 14 millimeters. What I want to do now is, is have a look at some photos. So I've got my iPad here, I've selected some photos and, and let's go through some of these. And I, I try and explain another pro, which is, it allows you to focus on the foreground using a wide angle lens. And one of the things that you've got to do to focus on a foreground is you've got to tilt your camera down. So you've got to point it down. But when you do that, then you can make that foreground look amazing. So here's an example. Um, I was shooting here, this was 16 millimeters. And I was shooting this scene and by tilting the camera down a little bit, I managed to focus on this really powerful foreground here. Um, and th and that, looks, that looks amazing. This is another good example. This was in Sky on Elgol, and you can see that I've got really strong foreground here, and what I've tried to do is, is, is make it quite simple and create some strong lines. So I've got a strong diagonal coming up here. I've got some other strong lines here. This bit here is quite simple, which contrasts well with this bit, and then I've also managed to match this bit to this cloud up here so there's some connection between the distance and the foreground so by concentrating on this foreground using a wide angle lens you can get some really powerful shots 
Also, you can you can concentrate on the sky as well. So, for instance, this was shot with a 14 millimeter Samyang 1 f 2.4 lens. This was in Stockness in um, Iceland. And you can see that e even at 40 millimeters, I could do with a, an even wider lens. This is a good example of where I could have probably gone to a 10 millimeter lens or something like that, which you get into sort of fisheye then, aren't you? Because I really want to accentuate um, the aurora in the sky, but I wanted to get this reflection as well. And um, you know, if, I'd have, if it had been doing shooting at 24 millimeters, then this would have probably been like that, and it just wouldn't have looked as good. I needed that 40 millimeters to be able to get more in the shot. So being able to get the sky and the foreground is useful. I, again, I took a shot here, which was fantastic at 14 millimeters. You can see that I've got the um, Milky Way here. This is in Glencoe, and I just managed to get a car coming through here. Again, you know, if, if I went to 24 millimeters, I just wouldn't quite get that same sense of scale, that same sense of grandeur of the landscape. Here's another one for stock, Stockness, such an amazing place for landscape photography. But again, by using a 14 millimeter, allowed to get this really good sweep. And you've got to remember that I'm putting the camera down at the, um, see here and what it allows me to do is get so much more of this foreground again if i just change that i went to 24 millimeters it'd be like that i wouldn't be able to get all the mountain range in and i just wouldn't get quite that sort of wow factor that you get shooting at 14 millimeters so obviously 14 millimeter allows you to get a little bit more in the frame and that little bit more can make a really big difference to the shot and the other thing that you can do when you're shooting at a wider angle like that is you can create something that's a little bit more unusual. So here, this is a scene from Lofoten in Norway, and you can just see how I've managed to just focus on this amazing snow pattern here. And because I'm shooting at 40 millimeters, I could shoot this in one shot. You know, I focused on the mountain here and the depth of field dropped all the way down to about there, I think. I wasn't too bothered about this bit here being in focus because this didn't matter, but all this is in focus and it just produces something that's just a little bit different. And being able to produce something that just looks a little bit different is a real big advantage of shooting at those wider angles, those ultra wide angles of uh, something like a 14 to 30 or a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Here's another example when I was in Harris, um, so this was a shot that doesn't really work at 14 millimeters. Um, I, I, you know, I just put the horizon in the center and because I'm shooting at 14 millimeters, I've got too much sky that's bland. But by just turning into portrait and concentrating on the grasses, then I managed to get this, which is a little bit more unusual. So I've got these amazing grasses down here that are moving in the wind and I've got, you know, still got quite a bit of sky. Again, if I was shooting at 24 millimeters, I'd be shooting like that and it just wouldn't have that impact that this shot has shot at a wider focal length. So it's fairly obvious what those pros are. You can create dramatic foreground shots and you can also create something just a little bit different. Um, but the thing you've got to be careful of is that shooting at ultra wide is difficult. It's more difficult to compose it and it's quite often more difficult to just think about the composition because you've got to sort of imagine it using wide angle. Now one top trick that I use is shooting with my um, iPhone 11 um, which has got a wide angle lens on. There's lots of cameras that have got wide angle lenses on but I, I, I find that then just shooting and looking through my phone can really help me find that composition. But it is difficult to compose the image and I'll show you some mistakes that I've made and um, when using a wide angle lens, you do have to be careful. Um, so this was a good example. I arrived at this scene in the Peak District and the sun was amazing. It had these amazing clouds and I ran around like a headless chicken trying to find a foreground composition because I wanted to shoot something wide. What I should have done is just focus on, on this and taken a shot, you know, probably like that, at maybe 50 millimeters or something but I tried to find a rock. And you can see this is a really good example here of what doesn't work with wide angles. So if I just sort of mark this up, you can see that I've got a rock, but it, it, it's sort of lost a little bit in this heather. I've not really concentrated on any particular shape in the rock. So I've got this rock here, which is just sort of on its own in this expanse of heather here. And really what you need to do with ultra wide angle is you've got to have something that's really definite in, in that foreground, something that's really strong. And that often takes quite a long time to compose. So when the light's changing like this, you just arrive at your scene, 
it can often go wrong, and it did in this case, and I didn't get a particularly great shot. So trying to find an image often takes longer. So here's another good example uh, of something where I really struggled with the foreground, and you can see straight away that this just doesn't really work because I've got such untidy foreground. There's lots of things going on. There's different types of rocks. There's different shapes of rocks. There's different textures in the rocks. So all this foreground here just looks a mess, really. And if you compare that with this one here, where I spent a lot more time fine-tuning the composition, this is when I first arrived in Elgol for a three-day stay there. And this is after I'd spent a lot of time looking around. And you can see that this foreground is much more structured but it takes time. Finding that composition is much, much more difficult. Okay, the next con that you've got to think about is that the background. When you shoot in ultra wide, that background gets diminished. Um, so for instance, in this shot here, you can see that those background mountains are starting to get small. Now, I think in this shot, I get away with it because it's quite a strong foreground. You know, I, I took this shot probably two, two and a half years ago now, um, but those background mountains are diminished. and. Because this is such a strong foreground, I think I get away with it, but you do have to be careful. For instance, this shot here um, of mass, I ch this is actually a 24 millimeter lens. And if, if I'd have you know, shot wider, then you can imagine those mountains would, would get a lot smaller. Um, and I feel that this is an example of where a 24 millimeter lens works really well, where I wanted you know, not to diminish these background mountains too much. Whereas I think this shot here is sh starts to show the problems that you can often get with a wide angle lens. Now, I, I don't, it's not that I don't like this shot, I do. I think that, that the, you know, the curve here in the clouds and the curve of the sea work really well together. But what I went to photograph, this lighthouse, becomes so tiny in the background that you can hardly see it. So you've got to think about that. You've got to think, do I want to focus on those background mountains or do I want to focus on um, or, or that background subject like a lighthouse, or do I want to focus on the foreground? So a, a good example was when I was in the Pharaohs with Mass, and I was shooting this shot here, where I was trying to get this lake here, which sort of floats above the sea. Um, obviously Mass got in the way here a little bit, but I felt in this case that these mountains and the mountains in the background here started to get a little bit diminished. And I think that the shot that I liked more in this case was the shot that was eventually shot at about 30 millimeters, which was this shot, where it sort of promoted these mountains a little bit more. Now they're different shots, but you can see the difference you get from going from 14 millimeters through to 24 millimeters. Okay, the next problem, and probably one of the biggest problems shooting at ultra wide angle is distortion. Um, and that's probably shown really well again in the Pharaohs. So we've got this massive sea cliff here, in the Pharaohs and it is really stunning. And you can see I'm shooting out to sea here, 14 millimeters. I often shot with a 14 millimeter lens in the Pharaohs, but you've got to be super careful because if I've got this on the corner um, or edge of my frame, you can see that you know that is not what the sea cliff was like. Um, the sea cliff was definitely fairly vertical. What's interesting is you can see the people on the end there. It's a huge sea cliff this, but what you've got to be careful of is those edges. You know, by moving this sea cliff into the middle, so if I just go to this one, you can see this is exactly the same lens, but all I've done is I've moved it closer to the middle and I've now got a vertical. So you've got to be careful where you place things with, with wide angle. Again, a good example of where that didn't work very well is this shot, which I really like. I've got some amazing foreground here. I really thought about that carefully in the Lofoten, but this, is quite a symmetrical mountain, but it's leaning to the right hand side. It looks a bit odd. And then you can see that, that the um, houses here are starting to lean. And you can correct that in Photoshop afterwards, but when you correct it, you lose some of your image and it becomes a bit of a pain. So you just gotta be careful about what you place on the edges of your frame when you're shooting ultra wide. And, and the final thing to talk about when you're thinking about ultra wide is filters. It's something that, um, People ask me all the time again, it's a question I get asked so much, uh, especially when I'm shooting 40 millimeters. And I have this adapter that fits a 95 millimeter uh, filter on. I use these case filters here, as you've probably seen. And, and basically what I can do is I can just put on a filter like that. So that's my ND filter. And then I can put on my polarizing filter on, on top of that like that. You can see that, you know, that they, if I look at it that way around, are covering and sticking out over the lens. And 
With that filter system, I don't get any vignette in, and that's really, really important. You don't want to get vignette in at 40 millimeters. Otherwise, what, what you tend to do is avoid shooting at that because you're worried about vignette in. But this allows me at least, I've, I never use one, two filters, but at least allows me to put two filters on my 14 millimeter lens, um, which, which is a really, really important thing. Now, I have to say, I don't use my polarizer that much with my 14 millimeter lens because you've got to be careful about the effects. Usually water does weird things as you're polarizing it. You've got to take a decision of what you want to be, be polarized the most. And, and when you're shooting with sky, you've got to be careful as well. So I hope that's helped. I hope that's given you some idea of you know, what to think about, you know, the basics and pros and cons of shooting with an ultra wide angle lens. Ultimately, for me, it's about those foregrounds, finding a foreground that's super simple and then really showing that foreground off and then thinking carefully about the background. If you're really close to some mountains like I, I am in Stockness where the mountains are towering above you, a wide angle lens can work really well because you can get that foreground in and the mountains aren't too diminished. But it's something to think about, something, it's a really powerful lens in your arsenal if, if used carefully and used thoughtfully. But don't just go to it all the time. Do consider using that 24 to sort of 35 millimeter range as well, because that can produce great results. So I hope you found that useful. I love using my ultra wide angle lens. It's such an amazing tool. If you've liked it, give it a thumbs up. Um, it really helps this video and my YouTube channel. And if you're not subscribed, then consider subscribing. Okay, that's it. Thanks ever so much, and until next Sunday, bye. What do you think of that? You like a wide angle lens? Or do, you not, do you not look good? You're very, very, you got these sticky dots all over you. Why, why do you go where there's, they take forever to get off, don't they? It's not good. You're tired, aren't you? Come on then, peps, we've finished the video now, we need to go. Okay? Bye. Go on.